In the spring of 1902, the Hanoi governor had a problem. There was an outbreak of the bubonic plague, and it threatened to spiral out of control. So the governor had a problem. He only had a limited amount of staff to try and fix the problem. So he offered a bounty to everyone living in Hanoi. And for each rat tail they handed in, he'd give them a small fee. Now, at first, his scheme seemed to be going really well. Rat tails flooded in. In March, when the scheme started, hundreds were coming in each day. By May, it was thousands. And on June the 12th, 1902, it peaked at 20,144 tails being handed in. But there was a problem. The number of plague victims wasn't going down, and the number of rats, if anything, seemed to be increasing. The governor had unwittingly unleashed the entrepreneurial spirits of the population. People were capturing rats, feeding rats, breeding rats, lopping the tails off rats, but the only thing they weren't doing was killing rats. They were too valuable. Now, this seems like a rare anecdote, a one-off historical quirk. But actually, the tragic consequences of poorly set targets are a remarkably regular occurrence. So common, in fact, that the German economist Horst Siebert has, toy has coined the term the cobra effect. Now, he's called it the cobra effect rather than the rat effect because there was a very similar instance in Delhi where the local authorities tried to kill all the rats, and again, that backfired. And Siebert's idea was that whenever there is a sliver of difference between the target that we set and the objective that we want to achieve, we unleash negative, um, unintended consequences. And my argument would be that today, in digital advertising, we're suffering from the cobra effect. The fundamentals are exactly the same. You know, the minor details may change. But fundamentally, in digital marketing, we're trying to solve complex problems with very simple metrics. So if you think about virtually all campaigns that go out, they have a range of short-term metrics, views, visits, sales. And that's not just an anecdote. The work from Peter Field has shown that um, by analyzing the IPA effectiveness data bank, that back in 2006, 7% of campaigns that were entered had a short-term objective. But by 2014, that had risen to a full third, 33%. And having those short-term metrics is a problem because metrics have an insidious effect. Once we've put them on a plan, it feels remiss not to optimize towards them. You know, to paraphrase Marshall McLuhan, we shape our data and then our data shapes us. And that has a negative effect on the impact of marketing because what he's also conclusively proved with Les Binet is that what works in the short term doesn't necessarily work in the long term. So again, a long-term overview of the IPA effectiveness data bank has shown that brand campaigns are outperformed by direct ones on a one-year timescale by about 60%. But then on a three-year plus timescale, brand campaigns outperform direct ones by, by sixfold. So we have a problem that we're using short-term metrics they at first seem like they're being successful, but the success is a mirage, it's an illusion. And we may well be driving sales, but we're not necessarily driving saleability. Now, it's easy to say what the problem is. It's harder to say how we should rectify it. But that's what I want to do tonight. And I want to begin by looking at what are the reasons why people are setting these short-term metrics. And although there's lots of reasons, I think there's two key ones. The first is the ever-shrinking tenure of marketing directors. So Martin Sorrell claims that the average CEO now lasts five years, the average CFO lasts four years, and the average marketing director lasts two years. Marketing directors are in danger of making premiership managers look like a stable career option. And that's a worry because of what's called the principal agent problem. So this is an idea from economics uh, created by or thought up by a man called Stephen Ross, who's the professor of finance at MIT. And in his words, 
there's a divergence of interest between the principal, and that is the company or the brand, and the agent, that is the marketer or the staff member. Now, in an ideal theoretical world, that shouldn't matter. You know, a marketer should just be interested in acting in the best interests of the, of, of the brand. But Ross's research shows that's what, not what happens in reality. Self-interest steers behavior. So if marketers are moving every two years, if senior marketers are moving every two years, they're probably starting to look for a job after 18 months. What they need to do to be successful in their job hunt is to show immediate um, shift in short-term metrics. They can't talk about what may or may not happen in 10 years or five years' time. So that's a really hard problem, I think, to resolve. Upton Sinclair famously said, it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on his not understanding it. But that's not the only problem. The second problem is all around ease. It's really easy to collect short-term data, it's easy to interpret it, and it's easy to see our success when we look at it. And I think that's gaining uh, more and more traction because people at least claim to be busier than ever. And whilst that claim might be dubious, people certainly have more data to deal with than ever. And because they've got so much data and so little time, they crave simplicity. They want to crush up the kind of messy complexity of life into a simple metric. But that might be desirable, but it's not necessarily the right thing to do. I think brands are currently like the drunk in the old story. And the old story goes like this, that one night there was a policeman walking on his beat, and he happened to see a drunk crawling around on his hands and knees underneath a street lamp. So he went up and found out what he was doing. And the drunk said, well, I'm looking for my wallet. So the policeman helps him for a while. And after a while, they still haven't found the wallet. So the policeman says, are you sure you dropped it here? And the drunk says, oh, no, I think I dropped it on the other side of the street. So the policeman's confused, says, well, why are we looking here? And the drunk says, well, the light's better. And I think marketers and brands, maybe even agencies, are like that drunk. They're confused, ease, and effectiveness. And unfortunately, I think they'll be no more successful in attaining their goals than the drunk will be in finding his wallet. So those are the two key reasons why we keep on putting short-term metrics on the plan. The key thing is then, well, what do we do about that? And I think there are two broad solutions. The first is to insist on balanced metrics on every single plan that goes out, every single digital plan. If we accept that data gives a partial view of the problem, then just having one type of data will always mislead. You need to genuinely have different types of tracking on every single plan. Now, of course, going back to the reasons why so much emphasis is put on short term, one of them was all about ease. But luckily, over the last two or three years, the ease and the cost with which to do basic exposed versus controlled tracking has plummeted. So there's no cost uh, or minimal cost implication now to doing that. So I think it's completely practical that we add that to all plans. And if we do so, it will be as easy for marketers and agencies to optimize the long-term data as short-term. But even if we do that, we still need to recognize that any metric we have is flawed. In the words of William Bruce Cameron, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. And therefore, if we believe that, we should be stressing that there has to be a larger role carved out for human intuition, human experience, and personal point of view. Now, if we go back to the, the, the reason why short-term metrics are so popular, part of that was about self-interest. So I think sometimes those otherworldly arguments seem like they wouldn't persuade people. But I think there's a big cause for optimism. Because advertising's been here before. Back in the 1950s, there was a huge craze, a fad for starch testing. And starch testing was essentially the idea that you get a group of people together, you'd give them the newspaper, they'd flick through it, and at the end, you'd ask them what ads they recalled. 
And like short-term metrics, that's a seemingly sensible solution. But once everyone universally adopts it as the measurement, it became completely useless. Because people created ads not to get real-world results, but to game the system, to do as well as possible on the starch test. So as David Ogilvy said, if all you want to do is get attention, it's simple. You just put a gorilla in a jockstrap. But the infatuation with starch testing passed. And I think if we replicate uh, how, they man how people manage to move on from starch testing, we too can move on from short-term metrics. And there were two broad approaches. Firstly, people regularly and repeatedly said how starch to, uh, what was working well in a starch test wasn't working well in practice. And so I think some of its aura was eroded. But what was far more important was people like Ogilvy wittily uh, mocking the logic behind starch testing. And I think that was what was most successful in reducing its appeal. Because from the self-interested argument, it's quite um, destructive. No one wants to look foolish. Looking foolish isn't going to improve people's career prospects. So I think if we replicate those two approaches, we can move away from some of the short-termism. But I just wanted to finish with one last story to sum everything up. And it comes from one of my favorite films. I've got two favorite films, La Haine and Hot Tub Time Machine. And unfortunately, I couldn't get anything relevant from Hot Tub Time Machine, so you're going to have to do with La Haine. And at the beginning of La Haine, the main character in it, Hubert, talks about a man who's just jumped off a skyscraper. And as the man's falling past each floor, he says, so far, so good. So far, so good. And I think, if anything, brands at the moment are like that falling man. They're seduced by the superficial success of their short-term metrics. But if they don't start bringing a more balanced approach to bear, if they don't start giving a broader role for judgment and intuition, then I think, like that falling man, they're going to have a very unpleasant landing. And as Hubert says in the film, how you fall doesn't matter, it's how you land. Thank you.